Mach 9. Back for the turn swap location, locals down. Thank you. Station and shuttle complex is currently about 212 miles above the Pacific Ocean and heading on a course that's going to take them over the western coast of Central rather North America, over Mexico, where they head across the eastern part of Texas. Copy that. And uh, at this point, I'm watching Ronnie, and he's making great progress uh, without you. I'm not sure you're going to be required out there. That's a fine how do you do. Looking at our uh, our list of get aheads, Mike. Uh, the next on our list is the uh, Node 2 Fluid QD thermal covers. Okay. And uh, it may work out perfectly so that the two of you guys can attack those together. Okay. Hey Hawk, we're tracking exactly I'll with take you. A quick look. We concur. I'll yeah. take a quick look at those. I'm going right by them here. gets better. <laughs> Good thing we put that in, huh? Yeah, it is. Good thinking. Okay, I see this. Yeah. Uh, right. Ron, do you want to get the camera out of the bag first or take the bag off after you put the camera on? I want to take the camera out of the bag first. Okay. decided he has the installation of the camera on the port truss under control and doesn't need Mike Fossum to come out and help. So Mike Fossum is going instead to the airlock to get ready for another get-ahead task. They'll be installing some thermal covers on some quick disconnects on the 
Stations Harmony Node. Okay. That's probably right here, just uh, starboard at the top of the feeder. That's exactly what I was thinking, right there. I'll go just a smidgen more. So there's That's a view from Ron Guerin's helmet camera as he is getting that newly repaired camera into place for installation. And, uh, Hawk, one we might want to offer up, we could use the large ORU bag coming off the CP9 camera for what Mike's talking about. If he, it might be easier for him to just go and put that down in the airlock. Also, we're going to need Mike to uh, recharge his O2. Just grab any SCU that's easiest to grab when he's in there, and we'll take about a five-minute recharge. Chris, I uh, love the way you're thinking, and uh, thanks for that plan. I like it better. Yeah, but yeah keep that bag, Mike. Uh, we'll use Ron's bag, and while you're down there, you can uh, cool your heels for a little bit while you hook up. Yep. I, uh, yeah, I wasn't looking forward to trying to shove those uh, launch restraints in this bag. It's uh, getting close to full. Yeah, Houston's plan is much better. Uh, yep. I love it. I think the scoop comes off next, and then we start driving bolts, right? Correct. Well, double check that way. Okay, I'm plugged in. A view of Ron Guerin working on the camera installation on the port truss while Mike Fossum is in the airlock recharging his oxygen before he gets started on the next get ahead task for the spacewalk. It'll be the third that he's done today. Two spacewalkers just passed five hour mark on the spacewalk, which is scheduled to last six and hours and 20 minutes. Okay, though. You sure? This 
Jackson, what do you think? Well, I'm just thinking because we just took it off yesterday. Yeah. And Houston, are you okay with him driving the bolts uh, without the visual inspection on the uh, connectors? Yeah, we'll take, them. We'll take that check on the blind head. Sorry, Ronnie, I let you down on that one. Break, 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 uh, Ron. That's a, we're getting we're, we're okay without inspecting them. You can you can continue to drive the center bolt. Yeah, thanks. Cool, thanks. Sorry about that. Yay! Thanks, Chris. Green light, 9.0, and it was 20, uh, 22 turns. 7-12. Garen reporting that Eve's gotten the first of three bolts of the camera. Installed, as you can see in this view from his helmet camera. After the second two are done, he'll just need to and, uh, unlock the camera so that it can pan and tilt, and then he'll get ready to return. You read our minds, now's a good time. And get started on the get ahead task with Mike Fossum. Michael, looks like you're done. Hey, I got a green light, 9.1, and it was there. Uh, and which bolt was that, the uh, after forward? Uh, aft. Copy. And I got about 800 pounds. Still in refresh. I could only pick up a cup of coffee at the same time. Station and shuttle are about 210 miles above the coast of Mexico. We're about to start crossing over 
North America going across Texas and Arkansas and small corner of Tennessee and Kentucky as well. Coming out of here and getting the get a head back. That's good. Hey Mike, I'm still thinking uh, it's most efficient if you go belly route and uh, Ronnie goes on the top. I know, but I think I can get him, man. Yeah, well, he's just buttoning up out there. I will be there in a minute. Like, uh, I don't, you know, I got a tether swap. I don't think I'll be there in a minute. I got to pack up the bag. Give me a little while. All right, nice job. The works side really looks different here than it did in the pool, man. With okay, the camera's like, pin uh, and tilt latch unlocked, down. now all yeah, that. The pool, it was a two person, but if you think you could do it. Now all that Garen has left to do is clean up his tool site and go meet Mike Fossum for their next get ahead task, installing some thermal covers on the quick, di quick disconnects on the Harmony node. Okay, double check that is definitely unlocked. Thank you. Station and shuttle just crossed over the border between Texas and Mexico and are heading on a path that's going to take them over Bryan College Station where Mike Fossum went to school at Texas A&M. Fossum, during his first mission on STS-121, became the first Texas A&M Aggie in space.
I'm at the work site for the uh, starboard sign. Copy. Station and shuttle just passed over Arkansas or, and are skirting around the handling load for less than 25 pounds on the fluid QDs in the lines. Okay. Heading over the northeast corner of Tennessee, about to cross over into Kentucky. Then they'll go over Indiana and Ohio. On the cover to uh, attach to one of the uh, bales. Right to that. And then uh, wrap around the pair. We want white out or silver out? Like white out. And Houston, do you want the uh, silver side of the MLI out or the white side? White. Okay. Ron, here comes the pan and tilt. Okay, stand by. Let me get in a position to see it. Teams on the ground are getting ready to check out the camera that Garen just installed, make sure that it can pan and tilt as we it's intended to. Okay, I'm in position. Chris, I don't see it moving. Yeah, we have we haven't uh, started it moving it yet. Should be moving now. Thanks, Ron. You're done with uh, checking that out. Oh, back over to Hawk for on the timeline. Got it. And Ronnie, uh, next is a tool inventory, a glove check. Uh, bag up the large ORU bag and head out. All right, that's the work. Teams in the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room say that the camera is moving and now producing good video. Here's a view from, this is the camera that Ron Guerin just finished reinstalling after it was repaired yesterday. A new su power supply was added to it to, to replace a failed one after Guerin and Fossum removed the camera during the second spacewalk of the mission. This again is a view from the camera that Garen, who you can see here, just reinstalled.
Jack, I've got the scoop. I've got the dummy box. I got everything else I started with. I've got the ret off the uh, light. And I got a good right glove and a good left glove. And I'm ready to move out. All right, sounds good. Did they actually turn the camera on yet? Garen's now going to head to the Harmony Node station where Fossum's already working on installing the thermal blankets on quick disconnects there. Ron, we have a good checkout. We have a good image and we've got good pan and tilt. Nice work. Fossum and Garen have just over an hour left before they're scheduled to end their EVA and They'll be doing this one last get-ahead task, the third of the day, before they head back to the airlock. Hey, Ronnie, you got a sec? Yeah. Let's take a look at Mark's window. That's good, Russ. Tether swap is in work, my local is down. Copy that. Hey, Hawker, a couple questions for you. Good. We're wondering uh, how, how the guys are feeling, how Mike thinks if he can do this. Uh, the rest of the job by himself, and if so, should we send uh, Ron directly out to do SLRs? Maybe he can do the first SLR, and uh, um, we can reevaluate if Mike needs assistance. Yeah, you guys are thinking just like us. I'm going to let Mike uh, settle in at the work site for the other one, and uh, then we'll make a call. By then, Ronnie should be probably right over the lap. Okay, and for Ron, the Sarge is locked, so he can go all the way to the work site. Great. Wow. Well, copy that. All right, what do you think, Ronnie? Sounds like fire. All right, and you have enough adjustables, don't you? I do. Okay, 
Oh, so I'll just take the bag with me, of course. Do what? I'll just, well, yeah, I'm just thinking about rent. It's a conversation between station Capcom Chris Cassidy and the intervehicular officer for the spacewalk, pilot Ken Han. Now that Mike Boston's gotten started on installing those thermal blankets, he's finding that he may be able to handle the task on his own, so Garen can go ahead and get started on yet another get-ahead task for the spacewalk, the removal of some launch restraints on the starboard solar alpha rotary joint. Mike, so I understand uh, you're going to be able to do this by yourself? Yep, famous last words. Okay, very good. <laughs> Kevin Roney. Good. Still working to finish one. All right. My tether swap is complete. I'm back with my airlock tether. Uh, close to the lock, double lock to the reel, and then unlock. I'm taking my air tether with me. Yep, yeah. I'm still in the uh, crew bus bag on here, so I'm going to drag it all over.
strap complete. Copy. Shorter than the one of them shorter than the other one. Yeah, they are slightly different. Okay. You got a wire tie you can attach to that and then stretch it down or something? No, I got it. Oh, okay. I got it. I just the, the cover. This cover is shorter. I'm just confirming that I wouldn't didn't have a bunch of slack somewhere that I hadn't accounted for. Yeah, I've got it, man. It's in the bag. Or out of the bag, as it were. Out of the bag, out of the sun. That's what it is. It is out of the sun. And when you finish up there, Mike, uh, I'm having a slightly different big picture plan. All right. You're scaring me, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, you're not. Okay. Got to look around. And a little bit of silver showing. If that doesn't matter, I'm done. If it does, I can tuck it around. And I'm going to go around the other side and do a little bit of adjustment. Into the room. And you see, you see in that uh, image on the downlink. No, we're, yeah, the image is very, very dark. I don't know if you can mess with the iris or not, but we can't really see it. Yeah, uh, you're talking about WDS. Yeah, I was sending you one down from one of our cameras. One, if, uh, if zero gap is the requirement, I can adjust. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, like I was thinking more we'll about the adjustment. Here, we don't want from the other side, which may be difficult for you. There's a little twist in the MLI so that the silver is shown. Yeah. Okay. I'll get and, and I don't know if that's a problem or not. Copy. And Houston, uh, I'll describe it to you on the uh, the far side of the QD area. Uh, there's a little twist in the very end of the MLI so that the silver is showing out. Uh, is that okay? Never mind. Well, our, yeah, never mind all that. Mike just fixed it. Okay, we, we see the never fix mind. there. The real question is if the QD is showing. Mike, you can press on. Okay, there's a little bit of a gap over here. I can finish that. It's a view from Mike Fossum's camera of the insulations he, insulation he's installing over connector on the Harmony node. Trying to make sure no gaps are left in the insulation. Once Mike's done, if you could back away and just kind of give us an overview WVS survey, that would be wonderful. And we're thinking. You bet. Fossum and Garen are just over five and a half hours into this six hour and 20 minute spacewalk. And are getting and sunset in a minute and a half. 
and are getting ready to start their fourth get ahead task. So in that time, if Mike could give us a WVS shot as far back as he could. Okay. Uh, can you, what are you seeing? Yeah, he's doing that right now. Hey, Houston, you're looking at it right there. We're yep, we're looking and checking. We're also seeing your downlinked image there, Hawk. Thank you. I have my safe what are you doing? My safe seven swap is complete. All close, line of lock, double lock to the rail. I'm on uh, small market 6300, moving out. Copy that. And uh, while they're thinking, uh, Mike, here's my new plan. Ronnie is already on the other side of the safety tether swap, going to do uh, two SARS launch restraints that, uh, you know, he's done two out on EVA-1. Right. I think he can do that on his own very comfortably. We're at a PET of 535 right now. So what I'm thinking for you is the next task on our list, which is the uh, Node 1 MOD shield. I can't remember if you were able to do that on your own or not. Uh, it's, it's possible. It's a tough task. Uh, and maybe going, uh, you know, I could give a couple of tries with the tool and then go to wire ties. That's about all we have time for. Yeah, that's uh, exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, the question is whether you need Ronnie there to give it your best effort or, or whether you can do it on your own. Well, I've got a chance of doing it. And uh, Houston, how do you like that plan? What do you think, Ronnie? We're happy you with... Out there? I'm good out here. Break, break. Hawk, we're happy with the QDs. Uh, we're talking about the timing of the um, Node 1 MMBD shield, whether or not we want to start biting off into that one. Give us a minute. Okay, the, the real point is that uh, at this point it's not much help for Mike to go all the way out after Ronnie because uh, I think Ron will be done by the time he gets there. And I have a chance of getting the, the uh, MMOD shield on Mike by the airlock in doing so. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, so Mike, uh, Houston was happy with the QD. When you get that uh, crew lock bag back on there, you can start working your way back. Yeah, we concur, Hawk. Going over the top of the board. I'm going to come store the bag. Copy. I do this right. I can stretch the right. Thanks, kids, part in the scene.
Rock, I'm going to stage a couple of reps in the back. Hey, good thinking. Nice job with the feathers, man. Totally clear. Thanks. Yeah, you said just to keep you uh, updated. Mike is uh, pretty much at node one right now. And it's the FF airlock. Hey, uh, and, to answer uh, the question on, on the on the node one part, uh, there's really, the, the adjustables that are holding the panel down are pretty well covered, so there's no life concern on those tethers. We think that's in a good config. We think that it's a two-person job to position and install the new panel over the top of that. So um, our recommendation is not to dive into the node one MMOD shield task at this time. We're, a couple options for Mike are, uh, one, he could move APFR ingress aid from the Zenith APFR up there by where the OBSS used to be stowed um, and put it down on the airlock APFR. Or if he, if he and Ron think it's worth going out to assist Ron, then that's another option he could head out to help with the, those tasks with, on the SLRs. And the last uh, option, well, the last option would be to uh, remove the P clamps on the FHRC, but he will need a right angle drive for that, and the right angle drive is back in the airlock. Uh, the right angle drive yeah, at the airlock is in the airlock. It, yeah, the right angle drive is in the uh, other crew lock bag at the airlock. Right. Um, I wasn't sure. I totally understood whether about the ingress aid task. I hadn't seen that one before, but it sounds pretty easy. Mike, would you like to do that? That, whatever they pick the highest party is, Tony, that's how they're going out there. Well, I mean, there's work for you to do out here, and if you head to, head to, head to this way, and I didn't need to, you could do the FHRC. That makes sense to me, but... Well, which do they want more, the, uh, the ingress aid? Or FHRC? Yeah, the ingress aid helps 126, so let's do that. Okay, okay uh, Chris, let me make sure I understand this. The ingress aid is up uh, near the uh, OBSS, and uh, Mike is just going to simply go up there and pick that up and relocate it. Affirmative. Okay. Where the OBSS used to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm going to drop this uh, crew lock bag down here then. Mike Fossum's third get-ahead task done for the spacewalk, and Ron Guerin working on a fourth. Fossum will now be going to the station's truss where they handed off the orbiter room sensor system on the first spacewalk of the mission to pick up an ingress aid and move it to the airlock to be used by the next flight to the space station, STS-126. Yeah, Mike, I was wondering that myself. I was hoping you knew the answer. <laughs> I know how they work. Okay, 
figured out. I may use an adjustable to tie it to my BRT. Push it out behind. Okay, check. Screw that bag. Secured. Yes. Meanwhile, Garrett. Ron Garin is working at the starboard solar alpha rotary joint, removing some launch locks. The fourth get ahead task that he and Fossum have worked on today. Garin removed two of the launch locks during the first spacewalk of the mission, and he has two more to remove now. In your path up to the top side. All right. Hey, Hawk, I got a rent squeeze to the bag. I'm getting, I'm getting adjustable on the uh, SLO right now. Copy. On the first one. I haven't made this trip in a long time. Finished up the EDA 3 with peers right here. Sit on this grapple fixture on the bottom of the MTA. Kind of cool. And Houston Discovery. So, Mike, as you're looking at it there, can you just move the uh, ingress aid by itself because I have something to clamp on this? Uh, no, you just set it to it and then kind of wrestle it. Okay. 
I will, uh, I'll just use an adjustable to, uh, wrap it onto my, uh, uh, BRT. Copy. Uh, Houston, uh, Discovery, did you copy Mike's question? Uh, we didn't copy his question. Um, uh, I've got some suggestions on how to carry it. One is the BRT to the T handle. Joe T did that before. There's some question whether or not oh, it holds it. Handle. Yeah, whether whether or not it holds it stable enough. But uh, obviously, yeah. you can uh, use use an adjustable like you're describing. And the other option would be to put the BRT jaws around the uh, section of the round part just below where the locking mechanism is. And it'll wiggle around, obviously, but you can secure it with a rest. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mike's got a plan for that. Uh, his real question was, uh, do you want to move the APFR? No, the APFR stays. We're just talking about the j ingress aid. Okay. Okay. Good. Seems like an unlikely place to leave it. An APFR hanging in a breeze, but okay. It's up here in case anybody needs it top side. And uh, he's just saying again the destination. To the APFR that Ron just stowed on the airlock toolbox. Okay, copy. There's about 30 minutes left in the six hour and 20 minute spacewalk that was planned. Yeah, Mike Fossum is getting to work on the, uh, thermal cover, which somebody won't like. the removal and transfer of a ingress aid for a foot restraint that is currently on the truss near where Fossum and Garen handed off the orbiter boom sensor system to the station's robotic arm on the first spacewalk, though he'll be moving it to a foot restraint near the airlock to be used by the crew during the STS-126 mission later this year. Meanwhile, Garen is removing some launch restraints from the Solar Alpha rotary joint on the station's starboard truss.
Okay, Hawk, uh, back with you after a quick handover. So, um, for Ron, we understand one bolt is removed and the Zenith bolt is bound after only four turns with about 15 more to go, 15 more turns to go. Uh, one option would be to um, use the manual mode in the in the PGT, make sure the MTL sets to 30.5. The other option would be to get the ratchet wrench, which, of course, is down there uh, um, at the airlock. thinking the same as you uh, looking at the PET that we're, we're thinking we'll take this one uh, this SLR for Ron and then knock the task off and head, head him back in for cleanup and ingress I concur <laughs> looking at the way he's working he may be tired by then you'll know he's tired when he says the magic word that pineapple no Oh, Mission specialists Mike Fossum and Ron Guerin are just a couple minutes shy of the six hour mark of their third spacewalk of the mission. Guerin is working on some launch, removing some launch restraints from the solar alpha rotary joint on the station's starboard truss. And and now you're back to just uh, I agree. It. Is that correct? Yep, I think so. Beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Garen ran into one bolt that he was having trouble with, oh, but seems to be working job, now, being able to get it off while Mike Fossum has made it back to the airlock with the ingress aid for the foot restraint that he was moving from the Mighty station's truss to the to a foot restraint on the airlock.
Garen removed two of the launch restraints on the solar alpha rotary joint during the first spacewalk of the mission and is working on a third. He'll leave the fourth on the joint and go ahead and head back into the airlock afterward. Ron, we'll, we'll uh, need to know which of the four SLRs remains on the, the work area. Yeah, the one I have is 3A. Hey, Roddy, is that F-Site uh, Zenith or Nader? That's Zenith, I have. Okay, so Chris, the remaining one is the uh, F-Site Nader. Okay, we copy, thank you. All right, Ingress 8 is installed, black on black, good full test. Nice job. SLR's in the back. Copy. See you working up there, Ronnie. Look like I'm sweating. Oh, I can't see the sweat. <laughs> Hey, Hawk, just, I think we're all on the same sheet of music. Break, break. Hawk, I think we're all on the same sheet of music here, but just to be crystal clear, um, we're moving into the cleanup and ingress phase of the EVA right now. Ron's putting the finishing touches on the SLR in the bag, heading back down the airlock, and Mike can start um, the preps for airlock ingress. Do you agree? I totally agree. I think Mike is going to uh, enjoy a few minutes just hanging out and uh, maybe watch the sunrise in eight and a half minutes. <laughs> well, that's part of it, but I'm watching Ron. I could see him through a gap, really well up through a gap in the radiators here. Yeah, it looks like Ronnie's got the bag pretty well buttoned up. Yep. You got any uh, bags you can put away there, Mike? Yeah, there are. There's two crew out bags. Get them in a minute. And Ron starts, gets that secured and starts moving out. This is a view from Mission Specialist Ron Guerin's helmet camera as he's cleaning up, having gotten one of the two remaining launch locks off the starboard solar alpha rotary joint. He'll be heading back to the airlock to finish up the spacewalk. Yeah, I don't think he used a whole lot of tools out there. Yep, I got my one of them down, one adjustable, it's on the SLR in the bag, and I'm down one wet, which is also on the bag. Okay, you're clear to go to your tennis swap. It'll work. Ronnie, it's kind of high on your left side, but looking good. Yeah. In a good place, you can probably see it. Yep, yeah, that's why I wanted it there. Yep.
Still on till sunrise. This is a view from Mission Specialist Mike Fossum's helmet camera as he's at the Quest airlock getting packed up now that he's finished his task and several more that weren't scheduled for this spacewalk. Station and shuttle are about 220 miles above the Southern Ocean right now and heading toward New Zealand and the orbital sunrise for this orbit. Copy that. Take your time. Swap is complete. I'm back on my airlock tether. Bell close, slide the lock, double lock to the reel. And I am in unlock. Going Very to get going to get my uh air, air tether. Got it. And off, I just uh haven't been very good about this today, tool check. I've got the uh, my original two reds and adjustable and I donated an adjustable to the L BD more U bag. So uh, and uh, I have uh, one extra rip that I picked up from the uh Medium more U bag out of the NTA. Copy. And uh Reds are hanging in there. Very good. Sunrise over uh, Tasmania.
Hey, Kevin Ronnie. Come down to see this bird. Can I go get my curlies? He's kind of a front of you there. Yeah, I just go for just a minute. I'll be clear. Secured in the airlock. As you can see, Mission Specialist Ron Garen's made it back to the airlock and is getting ready to head in. The spacewalk has now been going on for 6 hours and 13 minutes, scheduled to go 6 hours and 20 okay. minutes. Coming out. Right. It started today at 8.55 a.m. Central, Central Time. And in the 6 hours and 15 minutes that they've been going have completed all their scheduled tasks plus four and a head four and a half get ahead task. You're gonna release my safety tether. Alright, as desired. Okay, I'm gonna get it right now. There you go, Mike. Okay. I've oh, got it. view from Mike Fossum's helmet camera. Fossum's now inside the Quest airlock looking out at Ron Garen who's ready to get in.
You just heard pilot Ken Ham, the intravehicular officer for the spacewalk, tell Garen and Fossum, the shuttle and station are about 217 miles over New Zealand at the moment, just above Wellington. We never heard it uh, down here in the loop, so we just want to confirm that uh, all four bags are in there with the guys, a medium, two crew locks, and a large. Hey, firm. Yeah, we watched them all go in there and there. Okay, thanks. Thank you. 